Thank you. Well, exciting to be here today. So, um, I want to start by asking you to think about a very ordinary, everyday action. Something that you do many times a day, but to which you probably have never devoted a second thought. So the question is, what happens every time you switch on the lights in the room? Now, your ordinary perception of this is probably that as soon as you flip the switch, light instantaneously fills the room and covers everything surrounding you. But light doesn't travel with infinite speed. It travels at about 300 million meters per second. So what that means is it must take light some amount of time to travel from one point to another. So the reality is probably more similar to that of a sphere of light which gradually expands outwards from your light bulb and only very slowly bounces off the walls, off the window panes in the room, and sloshes back and forth. Now, light moves at extremely high speed, so we don't actually have the ability to do this or to see this actually happening in real time. But what if we could develop a superhuman power that would allow us to see this? Or in other words, what if we could develop a new kind of technology that allows us to freeze light in motion. What, kind, what would reality look like through this new set of eyes? What kind of things could we do with this technology that weren't possible before? In order to put this into context, let's take a step back in time. Let's go back to the late 1800s in California. There's a very hotly debated topic at the time, in particular between uh, artists and, and painters, and they were trying to figure out how to properly draw or paint a running horse. And the question was, do you paint the running horse with all four legs off the ground as if it were flying, or do all, at least one of the feet have to actually be touching the ground at all times? And the problem here is that the human eye takes a while to actually accumulate and build an image, even if though we don't realize this. And so, on the other hand, the legs of the running horse are just moving so fast that our eyes have no way of capturing the details of the motion. So, there was an open problem here until a photographer at the time, Edward Moybridge, came up with a very ingenious solution. He placed a series of wires along the path of the running horse, and as the uh, horse passed by, it would trip the wires, and each of these wires was connected to a camera. In front of the camera, he had placed a very fast mechanical shutter, and this shutter was fast enough to freeze the motion of the horse as it passed by. And thanks to this idea, he then gave us this now very famous uh, sequence of images where you can see that indeed there is a point in time where all four legs of the horse are off the ground. Now, although very simple, this was a pivotal moment in the history of photography. It was the first time that photographs were used to see something that the human eye could not see. Now, this technology has uh, been developed over the years, of course, and we now have commercially available cameras that can capture movement with a precision of one millionth of a second. So what that means, for example, is that we can freeze the motion of objects that are moving even faster than the speed of sound. But light, light travels a million times faster than sound. If we want to freeze the motion of light, we need to be able to freeze objects with a precision of one billionth of a second. Now, it's clear that this million-fold increase or improvement on the currently existing technology is not going to come about by simply trying to improve uh, or tweak what we already have. What is required here is a complete rethink of how we go about taking photographs. So we've been working over the past couple of years on precisely such a technology that does indeed allow us to achieve this kind of temporal resolution that is required to freeze light in motion. And the key concept here that we're using is that this camera is able to measure what are called single photons. 
We know that light travels as waves, but we also know, thanks to quantum mechanics, that at the most fundamental level, light is made out of particles, what we call photons. So an, an alternative description of what happens when you flip the switch and turn on the lights in a room is that you're continuously inundated by this flux of particles of light, photons, that are propagating in all directions. And the key point here is that because the photon behaves like a particle, every time it hits our detector, it gives off a distinctive click. And we can use that click to achieve the kind of timing precision that is required to freeze light in motion. So in order to understand how this works and how we can do this, let's just take a step back and look at how an ordinary camera, for example, a camera in your phone, just takes an ordinary still image. There's nothing moving here. Let's assume, for example, that we just want to take a portrait of our friend. So what your camera is doing is it's dividing the scene up into lots of little square pixels. And it's then by putting the information back from all of these pixels that you get the portrait of your friend. Now let's imagine our friend is moving. For example, he's throwing a ball, and we want to capture that movement. What our camera is doing is collecting photons which are arriving from the scene where the ball is moving, for example. And what it does, what it's doing, is it's dividing the scene up into pixels, but now the pixels are time pixels. Each one of these pixels corresponds to a definite time stamp or a time measured off a stopwatch inside the camera. So in a bit more detail, we have our camera, and we're going to attach this, we're going to connect it to a laser. This laser is emitting very short bursts or pulses of light. And then we're just sending these pulses of light back and forth, bouncing off some mirrors. Now, just by simple interaction with the air, so single photons will be scattered from air molecules in towards the camera. And these single photons will be detected by the camera. Every time a single photon hits one of the pixels, it will stop a very precise stopwatch. And we will then be able to read off the time measured at each pixel. In other words, this camera tells us not only where the light pulse is, but it also tells us exactly when it was there. So by putting all this information together, we have been able to make the very first video of a light pulse just propagating in pure air. And the time that you see counting in the top left-hand corner there, that's our stopwatch, is counting in billionths of a second. So all this took just 6.8 billionths of a second to happen. So we know and we've seen that we can freeze light in motion. So let's go back to my original question. What can we do with this that we couldn't do before? And what I want to do now is share with you some ideas. For example, we can use this kind of technology to see around corners. We can use it to see behind walls. Now, although this may sound remarkable, it's actually not that complicated. It's not too dissimilar from the way that certain animals find their way around in environments where they cannot rely on their uh, visual perception. For example, a bat, partially blind and flying by night, or a dolphin, trying to see underwater where light is absorbed over distances of several meters. So the way these animals find their way around is by emitting sharp clicks of sound. This sound wave will propagate outwards. It will then bounce off the surrounding environment and send back an echo wave. And by keeping track of the precise time it takes for that echo wave to return to them, they can locate any objects that are lying in front of them and also identify what those objects are. We are doing something very similar. Instead of emitting clicks of sound, we're sending out pulses of light. There's also an additional layer of complication in what we're trying to do, because 
we're not trying to look within the direct line of sight, we're actually trying to see behind a corner or behind a wall. So what we're doing is something similar to what I'm showing here. We have an object that is hidden from the camera behind a wall. On the left-hand side, we have our pulsed laser, which is sending pulses of light, and it's directing them onto the floor just beyond the edge of the wall. Every time one of these pulses of light hits the floor, it will emit a sphere of light that propagates in all directions. So in doing so, the sphere of light will also move behind the wall, and at some point it will hit the hidden object. And that hidden object will then reflect back an echo wave. And this echo wave will then return back and will pass through the field of view of the camera. Now, because our camera is so fast, it can freeze the motion of that echo wave as it passes in front of it. So just like the bat or the dolphin, by keeping a track of the precise time it takes that echo wave to return, and also by keeping track of the shape of that echo wave, we can precisely, lo well, first of all, determine if there is an object hidden behind the wall and also determine exactly what that object is. But we can do even more than that. This technology now is so efficient that we can determine if that object is also moving. And in combination with just a simple laptop computer, we can even predict the exact trajectory or the path the moving object is taking as it's moving hidden behind the wall. So I've shown you that we can use this remarkable technology to see behind walls. But what if we could see directly through a wall? Or even more interestingly, what if we could use this technology to look inside the human body? So what I'm going to show you here is an example of where we're looking at a human arm. And we're just sending our light pulses onto the arm. And you can see that every time one of these light pulses hits the arm, it, it's completely illuminated. And there are regions of shadow, there are regions of more intense light, and there are even regions where you can see this afterglow as light bounces back and forth. And all this is containing vital information about the composition of the body part that we're looking at here. So some credits to the people, a talented team of researchers who are making all this uh, possible. This camera technology is giving us a new way of thinking about light. It's showing us that we can do new and incredible things with light that we didn't even know were possible. I've shown you that we can see behind walls, and in the near future, we will probably be able to see directly inside the human body. This is just the beginning of a new form of photography, and I'm sure that in the future there'll be much, much more to come. Thank you.